34. Ship captains in navigating great distances at sea never need to factor the supposed curvature of the Earth into their calculations. Both plane sailing and great circle sailing, the most popular navigation methods, use plane, not spherical trigonometry, making all mathematical calculations on the assumption that the Earth is perfectly flat. If the Earth were in fact a sphere, such an errant assumption would lead to constantly glaring inaccuracies. Plane sailing has worked perfectly fine in both theory and practice for thousands of years, however, and plane trigonometry has time and again proven more accurate than spherical trigonometry in determining distances across the oceans. 35. If the Earth were truly a globe, then every line of latitude south of the equator would have to measure a gradually smaller and smaller circumference the farther south travel. If, however, the Earth is an extended plane, then every line of latitude south of the equator should measure a gradually larger and larger circumference the farther south traveled. The fact that many captains navigating south of the equator, assuming the globular theory, have found themselves drastically out of reckoning, more so the farther south traveled, testifies to the fact that Earth is not a ball. 36. During Captain James Clark Ross's voyages around the Antarctic circumference, he often wrote in his journal, perplexed at how they routinely found themselves out of accordance with their charts, stating that they found themselves an average of 12 to 16 miles outside their reckoning every day, later on further south as much as 29 miles. 37. Lieutenant Charles Wilkes commanded a United States Navy exploration expedition to the Antarctic from 1838 to 1842, and in his journals also mentioned being consistently east of his reckoning, sometimes over 20 miles in less than 18 hours. 38. To quote Reverend Thomas Milner, in the southern hemisphere, navigators to India have often fancied themselves east of the Cape when still west, and have been driven ashore on the African coast, which, according to their reckoning, lay behind them. This misfortune happened to a fine frigate, the Challenger, in 1845. How came Her Majesty's ship Conqueror to be lost? How have so many other noble vessels, perfectly sound, perfectly manned, perfectly navigated, been wrecked in calm weather, not only in dark night or in a fog, but in broad daylight and sunshine? In the former case, upon the coasts, in the latter upon sunken rocks, from being out of reckoning? The simple answer is that Earth is not.